Hey, welcome back. I'm Syrup Dishes here, where average guys are trying to just do something different. So, if you've watched my other series on these, we've got a couple charcuterie boards or cutting boards that we're doing some uh, river epoxy pour with. Now, we've done two slabs of cedar and one slab of apple wood, and I've got over here a silver maple slab, quite a bit thicker. The dimensions here are going to be about 16 by 20. You can Click over uh, to the other videos where you can see us planing these down in that process. Um, I've got a new type of epoxy. I'll show you that later on in this video, what we're going to use and what we're going to try. Um, but I've gone ahead and set up the boards uh, within the mold and I created those in the other videos as well and what I'm going to wait for is get my room to temperature you see behind me here this is my wine cellar and storage room so it's really just storage room where I got wine and uh, so I keep it really cold and unfortunately it's gonna probably mess up my wine I need to bring this room up to about 70 72 degrees I like to keep my wine about 60 58 60 um, and so I want to show you here just what our mold looks like for uh, the, the charcuterie board or epoxy cutting board. So let's take a look at what's there. Syrup dishes here. Average guys doing average things. Thanks for watching. If you didn't tune into our last episodes, you may have missed how we did this. But what you're going to have here is your board that you're using for the, the epoxy river pour. Now this is silver maple. We've planed this out. We've cut it in half. We have the live edge in the center where we're going to pour our river pour. Now we did this in the dead center um, because we like the darker wood with the lighter wood and then with the epoxy, we think that's gonna look pretty excellent. And then we went ahead and uh, we, we bought some uh, particle board and we've just layered it in what's called tuck tape now you can use regular pa uh, packing tape but this tuck tape is just sturdy does a real good job and your epoxy won't stick to it what's real important here with this is that you silicone the edges really great and so we've siliconed the outside and the inside now in my other video I said I used white silicone on purpose and I just didn't I bought clear and that's a faux pas on my part you can see here I've used some C clamps on top of some boards now these boards are here so the clamps don't get stuck by any epoxy I do over pour mine over the surface because I just want to make sure I'm not cutting away any more board than I need to on that um, so these pop right off when we're done that's gonna keep your board from floating up it also help if you have any um, just shifting or moving in there see so here's some other things to look for when you cut your boards you want to make sure that you cut them square because here you can see I'm not square. I'm going to end up with epoxy in there. Now I could fill that with silicone, but I'm going to let epoxy flow in there and I'm just going to trim it off and that'll help allow me to make my ends perfectly square when we're done. Knots like this, you'll fill those in with your epoxy as well. So here's your setup for your epoxy river cutting board. We are going to let this temperature get to about 70, 72 before we pour any of our uh, resin or epoxy in here. I do set my planks on two levels and that helps make sure I'm level um, and make sure I'm, I'm ready to go. Now you can check the surface of it as well. I also put it over two plastic bins that I put, uh, these are actually meat lugs and these are meat lug liners guys. That way if I have any spillover or leakage it goes right in there. So just some tips and tricks for you. I hope that works out. Thanks again for watching Syrup Dishes. Average guys doing average things. Tune in. Let's keep watching this epoxy pour cutting board. So we will often be asked about the dimensions of our projects. It's hard to tell in the camera exactly what the dimensions are. So I want to show you here, we're just under 20 inches. Our goal was 20 inches long, but the boards just couldn't be stretched that far. <clears throat> Additionally, we wanted 16 inches wide, and that's why you see a large gap there. So you can see we're right at 16 inches. Now upon finishing, we are going to be smaller than 16 by 20, but that's a pretty big big surface for a charcuterie board or even a cutting board but it should be fun our thickness is right at oh that's dark you can't see it right at an inch and a half well i'd like two inches inch and a half is actually really thick once you put the feel to it now our gap here um, for this surface you'll see in a bit but you can tell this is um, anywhere from three inches all the way up to this end 
which puts us just about at four. And so we're going to use, um, it's a little less than four, about three and three quarters. Up further at the end, it's uh, um, real close to four. So up next, we're gonna show you how to calculate your epoxy for that. So welcome, I am going to use this free online epoxy calculator at Total Boat. Now, please forgive me, I didn't buy Total Boat epoxy resin. However, I think this tool is great. It's free, it's easy to use. Remember that we estimated our length and width and thickness in inches, and to get volume, you need length times width times height. So we overestimated our length from 19 and a half to 20 inches. We overestimated our width from varying degrees. So we're just going to average that at three and a half. <clears throat> and remember, we looked at our thickness at right around one and a half inches for our project. Now, I could be over, I could be under. I'm, I'm a little concerned because I have the corners and edges that weren't square and I may have some, some spots where I need a little extra epoxy. So we need 58.01 ounces and I measure in milliliters. So I'm gonna come over here just to a Google app and I'm just gonna convert 58 fluid ounces into milliliters. That's 1,715 milliliters. So you always uh, like to over mix your epoxy because you can cover the surface and plane it off. If you under mix, you're scraping away some of the wood and I'm not overly concerned about that here because I have plenty of wood, but I would like to get it close. So I'm going to look at about 900 milliliters. That should give me eight, uh, 1800 if I do two pours of 900. I've got a little surprise for you and how I'm going to mix this and what I'm going to do. So stay tuned. Let's head over and see what I got going on for mixing. I haven't tried this before. Something I'm excited to try and give it a go. It's going to turn out great either way. I just hope I get the effect I'm looking for. So we're going to take this 1750. We're going to make uh, 1715 milliliters. We're going to actually make eight uh, 1800, two pours of 900. So let's go take a look at how we do that. We are checking in here at about the 10th or 11th hour, still really liquid, starting to get some nice swirls in here. You'll see we uh, ended up with an underpour of about an eighth of an inch, which is fine. That'll be taken care of in the finishing process and stages. We'll pull that dam out. That'll lower it even more uh, here shortly.
So I used a router to surface this because previous experience the planer chipped the epoxy. Afterwards I did a lot of sanding. I started at 60 grit um, and then I went and cut the uh, extra epoxy off the edges as you saw. Worked my way from 60 grit up to 220 and then tried to focus mainly on the epoxy. From 220 I went to 4, 6, 8, 1,000, 1,500, 2,000, and then I hit it with a light buffing compound. I add little rubber feet to the bottom of mine just to help keep it up off the table a little bit and keep that epoxy from scratching. I do use mineral oil. Uh, I have not yet coated in clear epoxy, although I'm thinking about it. That mineral oil is nice because, as you know, epoxy does scratch real easily. It's just plastic, and so this mineral oil uh, helps protect the wood, and the only part that will scratch is that river pour. It's a pretty fun project. Love those two colors. We add something extra every time. Talking about adding a juice groove, but we have plenty more coming. Let's highlight a couple of these. We're going to have a walnut serving tray coming up, and then we're also going to be adding in a, oh, it's pretty big. It's about an inch thick, and it's around 21 inches wide and 33 inches long. And this is a noodle board. It'll cover the stove and the sink. So tune into those videos. Let's check them out.